You know, network security breaches only make the headlines when something is truly unique and different. And as certain activity becomes commonplace, it takes more and more audacious events for it to then make the news again. Well, I know it sounds cliche, but it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Ransomware attacks have been all over the news cycle, and we now need to adjust our perspective to this new reality. Welcome to Stratocast Perspectives. My name is Rob Boyd. Well, today's perspective concerns ransomware, a devious form of malware designed to encrypt files and make them unusable. Entire organizations screech to a halt. Nobody's working. Attackers then wait a beat before making their ransom demands, all to make you feel the pain so that their offer to fix it seems so much more affordable, so, so easy, a quick cure. It's tempting, but as you know, it's just not that simple. So Rob, a few years ago, back around 2016, when ransomware reared its ugly head, we saw the victims paying when they paid ransom, usually in the tens of thousands of dollars. But over the past few years, these attackers have become increasingly sophisticated and they're researching companies, they're looking at different verticals, they're looking at revenue models and determining which organizations would likely pay the ransom. And the ransom is in the tens of millions of dollars. Michael Wilcox is chief security officer for Stratascale, and he has seen how attackers are increasing their leverage. So the ransomware uh, attackers are saying, well, if you don't pay the ransom, we have intellectual property. We have personally identifiable information. We have sensitive data, and we are going to release it if you don't pay the ransom. So this is kind of a game changer because they're really tightening the screws on their victims. Supply chain attacks continue their double-digit growth as cyber criminals tamper with solutions you are using in your business. This is a long game that adds pressure to our responses, one of which has been immutable backups. The attackers wouldn't be able to go in and also encrypt our data backups as well. Third-party vendor management is complex. There's a lot to the supply chain attacks, and that's really why we need to be thinking differently about how we restore our data. All of the evidence points to our need for a reality check. We really need to position the business so they understand that there is a high degree of probability that at some point we're going to be affected. And once you make that mindset shift, you then need to reflect on how you would prepare. We should never be in that position where we're determining whether or not we're going to pay the ransom. That is a business decision. In the headlines that we've seen in the past few months, we've seen that CEOs have made the decision to pay ransom. We haven't seen headlines that say the CISO decided to pay a ransom. And so we need to have those conversations up front. And one of the best ways we can do that is by having a documented incident response plan, by testing that incident response plan with the business, by sitting down, doing tabletop simulations, and and bringing corporate communications, the legal team, the privacy team, customer service teams into the fold so they understand and build that motor memory of what they would do if a ransomware attack actually hit. Test, verify, and don't forget the little things like cryptocurrency. Broker it get it set up because what you don't want to do is go out to google and try to figure out how do i buy bitcoin or how do i buy monero people and passwords are an age-old mismatch but good authentication measures have never been more critical multi-factor authentication is something that many companies implemented during covid 19 make sure uh, you finish with your multi-factor authentication deployments and even for the publicly accessible vpns that's good in terms of perimeter but also try to apply that extra level of granularity for your key systems as well you never want to over rotate on the perimeter of course our big goal is to minimize the time between detection and response Monitoring is one of those things we always need to do, but just looking for things that appear to be weird. Um, the exfiltration of data can be a, a key trigger if you see very large files uh, that are moving off of your network to uh, an outside repository, you may want to block that. You may want to look for changes in file structure. 
Michael's final tip concerns the need for a secure architecture. Certainly not new to any best practice list, but now it's getting more traction, albeit from a different angle. I'm having a lot of conversations with CISOs about zero trust, and that's a theoretical model which basically says, instead of having that perimeter-based security that we're accustomed to, we're going to use many disparate technologies, and we're not going to trust any device. We're not going to trust anybody. We're going to continually challenge them. So it's, it's flipping the model on its head from our historical model. And we're making sure that we've got very good visibility and we're not letting people just access a flat network. Well, it can feel overwhelming to get started, but it does help to work with those who've done it before. One of the most important things to know is where you are right now. How much risk are you currently accepting? Well, Stratascale has a deep bench of experts ready to help answer this. It becomes data for making the right investments when you want to reduce or transfer that risk that you now are aware of in some manner. So reach out and learn more at stratascale.com. There are well-researched reports on these threats and other, of course, non-security challenges that you may also be grappling with. Either way, thank you so much for joining us.